Okay. So I, I simply create a private space and I will simply create a private network by clicking on this create private network. And you have like, you can select the region. So currently we have a 12 region. I will just uh, keep the default one and I will give a IP range, which is known as a CAID or mask, which we generally give in the VPC also. So I'll just select the mask of 22, which give me 1024 IP addresses. I will just say create. Uh, I think I given something wrong. Let me delete it. I don't want to use 169. Let me recreate. Okay, I will create it again. M mule test PS create create network. I will just give the CIDR mask. Okay, just get it. Okay. So guys, welcome to the Surat uh, MuleSoft Meetup uh, 63. And topic for today's meetup is all about a cloud of 2.0, shared space and the private space. So we will going to discuss uh, what is the difference between shared space and what is the private space and how it is different from any point virtual private cloud in the cloud of 1.0. CF Harbor statement, both the speaker and the host are organizing this meetup in the individual capacity. We are not representing our organization here. This presentation is strictly for the learning purpose and we are not holding any responsibility. The same solution works with your business requirement. This pr presentation is complete. It's, me, it's not meant for any promo promotional activity. It is just for the educational purpose. Housekeeping, the recording of this meetup will be uploaded to the event page within 24 hours. You can ask the question at any time. Please try to make the session interactive. I think somebody is on uh, unmute. Uh, can you just go on mute and try to make it more interactive? And finally, like it, it is like, you know, we always expect the feedback from you at the end of the session. So please provide the feedback. It is, it is very useful for us uh, uh, for the further session improvements. I will just skip the introduction. So agenda, uh, we will going to discuss what are the features, capability and the architecture of cloud of 2.0. What is the shared space? What is the private space? When to use the shared space? When not to use the shared space? When to use the private space? What is ingress load, load balancer? And how to create a private space? So we will going to discuss uh, all those things. Also, we will going to discuss what are, how to whitelist the IP, static IP addresses basically. And like, apart from that, we will also see uh, uh, different firewall rules, route tables. So there are many things we're going to see in today's session. So like, let me start like, you know, I'll ask him one question. Can anybody differentiate uh, between cloud of 1.0 and the cloud of 2.0? Anyone? Yeah. Hi, uh, hi everyone. Uh, this is Lokashree. So. Uh, Cloud Hub 2.0, we have uh, uh, rolling update and uh, recreate as uh, two different deployment options. And we have the oh. fractional V course available and dedicated load balancer logs are available for downloads. So this is, this is the upgrade what we have it in 2.0 as far as my knowledge. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for, you know, uh, answering. Anyone else? It's uh, Cloud Hub 1.0. It's based on the uh, deployed in the VMs, uh, individual VM, and uh, here it is uh, Kubernetes. I think internally it's managed within Kubernetes. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's RT of runtime fabric menu, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what is uh, happening in the Cloud of 1.0? Basically, whenever you are deploying the application, let uh, you, what you does, you select the worker number of worker, then you select the worker size, right? What is the size of your worker basically when you deploy the application? What does this mean? So whenever you select the one worker, so it will create a one EC2 instance in the AWS, right? Uh, for like, you know, for that particular selected size. So if you're selected 0.1 V core, I think it provides 8 MB of, you know, 8 GB of data or like, you know, uh, 2 MB or 3 MB of, you know, memory, such, such kind of, like, I don't know the exact figure. So it will configure a EC2 instance in AWS it will set up a JVM on the top of JVM. It will set up a mule runtime 
on the top of mule runtime it will deploy your application basically right and it will also install the monitoring agent if you have enabled the any point monitoring it will also install the a monitoring agent basically so this is how happening in the cloud of 1.0 so basically it's a virtual machine created in the aws with a linux operating system on the top of linux operating system it deploy a mule runtime on the top of mule runtime it deploy the mule application if you are selecting the two worker then it will create a two different ec2 instance which is load balance basically using the shared load balancer basically right so that is how it is happening in the cloud of 1.0 but in cloud of 2.0 it uh, we call instead of worker we call as a replica right so replica and instead of worker size we call as a replica size replica size so replica is nothing it's a pod. It, uh, it's a containerized right so it's a containerized environment in the cloud of 2.0 we get a containerized environment which is the kubernetes based basically where your application deployed in the individual container basically so each container will have its own jvm on the top of jvm it will deploy the mule runtime on the top of mule runtime it will deploy the mule application so each replica or you can call each pod will have its own jvm it will have its own uh, mule runtime it will have its own mule soft application basically so here uh, we are getting the isolation on the base of the container whereas in the cloud of 1.0 we are getting the isolation on the base of ec2 instance or the virtual machine basically right so let me open the presentation let we discuss more so as i mentioned a cloud of basically allow you to deploy the application in the containerized application which is the kubernetes based cloud up allow you to deploy the application in the private space in the and the shared space basically shared space is nothing it's a multi tenant uh, multi tenant environment where the multiple tenant of the mule shop the multiple customer of the mule shop can host the application within the same space or within the same network segment basically but it doesn't mean the data will be shared uh, no but data of the one tenant will be shared with the other tenant it is secure but they can deploy the application into the same same space basically into same network segment but with a private space it uh, you can deploy the application in your own network segment basically in your own ip ranges you can define a private space where you can deploy your application uh, but the other tenant of mule shop cannot deploy the application in that particular space basically it's a container based application isolation which we have discussed uh, just now it's available in the 12 region so cloud of 1.0 is also available in the two, uh, 12 regions which is across the north america europe you know and uh, canada basically uh, like it's also available in various uh, asia pacific region it also provide a more granular v core option if you see a cloud of 1.0 it provide start with 0.1 then 0.2 then after 0.2 it directly go to 1 2 4 8 16 but here we have a more granular v core option we have a like 0.1 0.2 then 0.5 then 1 v core 1.5 2 2.5 3 Five four, so you can you cannot allocate more than four V cores basically to one replica. But in the cloud of one point zero, we can up, uh, allocate up to sixteen V cores to you know one of the worker basically. But here you cannot go more than four V cores basically, right? Here, if you it support the any point clustering, whereas cloud of one point zero doesn't support the any point clustering. But here it support the any point clustering, which means you can share the object store across the multiple replicas of the application, right? so for enabling the uh, any point clustering you you may minimum require two instance or two replicas of your application it support a rolling update and recreate deployment model so with rolling update whenever you are doing application deployment right uh, so whenever you doing like redeploying your application always go for the rolling update if you are looking for zero downtime updates basically but in case of recreate it will it will uh, deploy the application Okay. So whenever you are deploying the application for first time, always go with a recreate deployment model because recreate is the faster than rolling update. But in case if you are enhancing the application and you are redeploying the application, just go with a rolling update because it will ensure that the, the like you know while redeploying the old instance or old application is available and it can be accessible by the client. It's it's a dynamically scalable. So basically, like uh, you can uh, scale. uh like scale the application by increasing the number of worker or number of replicas uh, uh, that is horizontal scaling vertical scaling can be achieved by increasing the v core size okay and also cloud of 2.0 provide a ingress load balancer on the top of your application which is self managed 
which is a uh, managed service which auto scales like you even don't have to configure any uh, ingress load balancer like dedicated load balancer here it is uh, it is like you know it's inbuilt and it's auto scales basically it depending on the number of request it auto scales or like it can be scale up it can be scale down depending on the number of request right and you don't have to do any configuration for the ingress load balance it is a self managed and it also support the features like intelligent healing and the zero downtime update we have already discussed a zero downtime update just whenever you are doing horizontal scaling or the vertical scaling always select the deployment model equals to rolling update because it will ensure the zero downtime update with intelligent healing you can like in case of like you know whenever you are deploying the multiple replicas or application it will span across the multiple availability zone in case if one of the data center or one away of the availability zone goes down you have a other uh, replica located in other availability zone basically right so that can serve the request but in case what uh, what happened to the replica which has been crashed right or which has been stopped and which has been gone down due to some hardware failure or data center failure that particular replica will try to you know come up in some other availability zone in case of if there's any jvm failure or in case of any network failure or in case of your replica get crashed because of some memory leakage so replica will try to come up automatically you don't have to do anything it will try to come up automatically basically it can store up to 200 mb of logs or 30 days of log whichever limit comes first whereas in cloud of 1.0 you have just store 100 mb of day 100 mb of log or 30 days of the log any question uh hi jackie yes so just one question here so in cloud of yeah. uh, 2.0 right because it's based on the uh, container so does mm -hmm. it automatically create uh, kubernetes kubernetes like does it automatically uh, uh, man, uh, like you know uh, managed by kubernetes because it's in, I, uh, but like, it has to be managed by kubernetes right like you don't have to do anything it is automatically managed it's a managed service right so you don't you don't have to worry about the underlying hardware underlying software you just have to worry about the application deployment and application development and design right so rest of the thing like all the underlying hardware and software will be taken care by the mule soft you know you don't have to worry like in case of application got crash or if there is any jvm failure right the application will automatically try to recover so so for like you know any any application deployed in cloud hub 2.0 uh, for uh, one week or so basically it will create one docker container right or uh, like yeah it, it depend on how many replicas you selected right if you select the two replicas uh, like you 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 are deploying a replication and you select the one replica and mm -hmm. like you are select the cpu size or v core size of one v core so it will create one replica right for that particular application with a v core with a one cpu basically correct in case if you are selecting two replicas and you are saying the replica size equals to one v core so it will create two replica for that particular application each replica is of one cpu okay okay so it basically like you know creates uh, it, 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 it automatically is managed by kubernetes cluster at a time of deployment deployment right yeah you just have to select the configuration what configuration you want you want three replica you yep. want four replica right yep okay got it thanks see uh, cloud up 2 point support clustering which i mentioned just now right cloud up 2 point doesn't support clustering it's wrong it's clustering but it doesn't support the persistent clustering but it support any point uh, clustering basically transient kind of clustering and you can save the vm queues you can save the cluster a cluster basically right but here we do i told you right it doesn't support the persistent queue basically right if you want to make like you know if you want to use some kind of persistent queue you have to move to some gms queue or any point m queue oh, okay okay let me go to the next slide shared space so what is a shared space as i discussed the shared space is a multi tenant a network segment or multi tenant environment which is shared by all the tenant of the mule shop so basically you got one network network segment so it might be like uh, like there are, there can be n number of network segment available and you don't know where your application goes uh, in which network segment your application will get uh, you know get deployed basically there might be possibility other tenant application can also get deployed in the same network segment basically so that is the concept of multi tenant uh, environment basically right but it doesn't mean the like if two tenants uh, application got deployed in the same network segment it doesn't mean it will going to share the data or one uh, one tenant can see the application of other tenant no that's not possible right it is 
like it is visible to your organization only and even the data will be not shared across the application right so like uh, you like you can deploy the application uh, in the shared space within the 12 different regions basically right so when to use the shared space so basically whenever you don't have a requirement to use some kind of custom domain or i call it as a vanity domain right you can and then you can continue with a cloudup.io in such cases you can go with a shared space and whenever you don't have a requirement of two uh, two way authentication or custom certificates right you can go with a shared space whenever you don't have a requirement to connect uh, application located in your corporate data center or maybe on some private cloud like aws maybe on public cloud like your resources is directly not accessible over the internet in such cases if you don't have that requirement you can go with a shared space for example if you want to only connect the saas based application or the application which is available over the public internet right in such cases you can go with a shared space whenever you don't have a requirement to run your application in the isolation right now from the public cloud whenever you don't like whenever you don't have a requirement to run the application in single tenant mode right you want you are fine running the application in multi tenant mode you can go with a shared space whenever like you don't have a requirement of you know ip uh, like uh, whenever you ip white listing at the destination side right you may require some kind of static ip addresses by default shared space doesn't provide any kind of static ip address even you cannot configure on your application directly for that you require the private space you will come to know why i am saying this statement i will going to explain you when i will show you private space when not to use the shared space Sim simple it's just the opposite of when to use the shared space basically whenever you want to run the application in the isolated network segment then you can go with a shared space you whenever you require the custom domain or vanity domain you can go with a shared you cannot go with a shared space whenever you need a custom certificate or whenever you want to enable the two way authentication you cannot go with a shared space whenever there is a need of private endpoints right so whenever you need a private endpoints so by default shared space doesn't provide any kind of private endpoint so like you know so you will come to know what what is the uh, significance of the private endpoint so you cannot go with a shared space whenever you want to connect the resources which is located over the corporate data center or on premises or maybe on some private cloud like you no know, and or or the resources which is not available directly on the uh, public internet and they are located in the private network in such cases you can go with a shared space you cannot go with a shared space sorry right any question on the shared space shared space like you might be aware like you know uh, in cloud of 1.0 we have something called shared load balancer right where like uh, you deploy the application on the shared load balancer here we call this as a shared uh, shared space so this is the typical architecture of the shared uh, uh, shared space where like uh, you it's a like you don't have to configure anything uh, for for deploying the application into shared space it's everything is ready made so basically like you can like you know deploy the application in the shared space basically you can deploy only those application in the shared space where like you want to only connect the internet based or application or saas basically and you can use the like this particular url so basically my app it also hyphen it generate the six digit id a unique id which is across the control plane dot again six digit saas right dot region dot cloud up dot io so this is the url get generated when you deploy the application into the shared space and you can access the application but the problem here like you know for each application you will have a different url so you may have a requirement where you have to host all the application under the same domain right so in such cases you have to go with a private space we cannot define a we cannot host all the application deployed in the shared space under the same host or under the same domain it's not possible with a shared space it is only possible with a private space right any question no da it doesn't support uh, like you know transient queue is not support okay so i i like uh, let me enable the mic it uh, i can there are a lot of people i will i will do it at the last okay so what is the private space now like we discuss about shared space so like uh, let's do one thing before i move into private space 
so let me go like you know go to any point uh, just give me a second i will just give me a one minute Yeah, sorry. So let me just uh, move to the private. Not sorry. Can you hear me, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I will just go to the application, and uh, so I might be having some application. Let me check. Should have some jar somewhere. If not. Let me export. So what I'm doing, I I will try to deploy one application into the shared space. I don't think this is the right. A simple application. Let me check. Not this one. I think this is the right application. So what is the endpoint for this? And one thing, like I forget to tell you. So if you see, like uh, uh, in the cloud of 1.0, for all the public traffic, uh, we support port 8081 and 8082. 8081 for HTTP public traffic and 8082 for the HTTPS public traffic. Where is in the cloud? Like for private, we are using 8091 and 8092. So all the HTTP traffic on the private endpoint is on 8091. And HTTPS private traffic on 8092. But in Cloud of 2.0, you have to always deploy the application on 8081. It doesn't matter whether you are deploying in the public uh, uh, endpoint or on the private endpoint. So you have to always deploy your application on port 8081. So here, if you see, I just want to check whether my configuration is a port 8081. Otherwise, it will not work. It, even if you see the runtime fabric, right? Where also we have to deploy the application on port 8081. Okay. So let me export this application. Just finish. Yes. Uh, just question. When does the port 8091 and 92 use the Chitendra? Just missed. It's in part. BPC, right? Whenever you want uh, to ex whenever you want to access the private endpoint, right? In mm -hmm. within the VPC or whenever you access the application. Uh, intern uh, like internally right you always use port 8091 for http and 8092 for https so that is http dot private port http dot private dot port 8092 like that okay, okay thanks so so what i'm doing so here i have a lot of shared space you are here you can see the mule test ps this is the private space which we have created at the start of the session but i will use the shared space now so I just select the state space. I will just uh, say one application mule test demo, right? Default like uh, cloud of 2.0 support uh, 4.3.0 and the greater. So it doesn't support any version below 4.3.0. Keep this in mind. And here, like you can see how many uh, replica size. So I can say 0 0.1. I told you, right? 
So ma maximum you can allocate up to four uh, VCO. This also support options like 3.5, 2.5, 1.5, 0 0.5, and 0 0.2. So we have a more granular option. Then here you can select the replica count, right? Uh, is one, right? In case like uh, if you see the any point clustering is uh, disabled, run the cluster mode. If I say two, then you can select the cluster mode. But right now, like you know, I will just go with uh, one. Then you can select the deployment model. It's a new. I will just go with the recreate because I don't want any you know zero downtime update uh, because I'm deploying it for the first time. Then it's a ingress. Uh, so last mile security is one of the option. Basically, like whenever you want to enable the HTTPS communication between your ingress load balancer and your application deployed on the shared space or private space, right? You can enable the last mile security. But right now, I I have a HTTP endpoint. If I enable the last mile security, it will not work because it will look for the HTTPS endpoint. But now my application have HTTP HTTP endpoint basically, right? So I will just choose the file. And I will, and if you want to have any custom properties, you can just add it here, say like cloud of 1.0. If you want to add any logging packages, you can also add it here basically. So these are the settings you need to do and simply click on deploy application. It may take a few seconds, not few seconds, few minutes basically. Let me check the chat window also, if there's any question. Uh, hi, Hitendra, sir. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. You are audible. Yeah. So in Cloud of 1.0, we have uh, one worker, one EC2 instance, and inside that one EC2 instance, we can deploy just a single mule application, correct? Correct. So in the same thing here. Of, uh, yeah. yeah. So in case of Cloud of 2.0, we have a Kubernetes pod, and inside Kubernetes pod, we have a mule runtime. And, only a single mule application will be deployed here, correct? Yes, yes. So you, you will of, all, hmm? it, it's happening same on the booth, right? Only difference here we have a container and there we have a virtual machine, right? Yeah, correct. So in case of clustering, so let's say we have two work, uh, two replicas here in Cloud of 2.0, then will that two uh, two copies of that particular mule application will deploy to single mule runtime like a single no, it, it, it it will be two different pod basically but it create mm -hmm. a, a distributed data grid storage right so they both are communicating with the distributed data grid basically that the hazel cast clustering right so they Correct. create some kind of memory right so in the clustering we have a concept we have a one primary node and one secondary node right so it right. will also create uh, a, a, on the primary node, it will create a distributed uh, grid storage basically, right? So that mm -hmm. they both are communicating with the distributed uh, uh, grid and they will store the object store there basically, like you no, know, all the data and everything like which has to be shared, right? That will be stored in the distributed data grid storage basically. If primary go node goes down, then secondary mm -hmm. will come to know like it's, he's not able to connect with the primary node right and the secondary will become the primary and it will create the distributed data so you you will never lose that data basically like if at least one replica is up right the data will never lose like you know so they they are they are saving the some space between both the both the replica if you have three replicas you will have a single it will create a distributed data grid storage and through which they are communicating but it, it but it doesn't mean they will deploy the same replica as you know on the same kubernetes it doesn't mean that okay but in case of cloud of 1.0, it used to be a single mule runtime and all the mule application used to get. No, it, it, no, no. It's on on premises. No, yes. every application have its own mule runtime. Okay. So the concept is the same. Hazel cast uh, like data grid will be created. Right? Cloud of 1.0 doesn't support any point clustering. Uh, no, uh, on premises, right? Yeah, it's the same concept. But yeah. currently, Cloud of 2.0 doesn't support the persistent clustering where, you know, like in on premises, we can create a database and we can create a persistent uh, any point clustering, right? But here we cannot do that right now. Yeah. Right. Got it. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is a, I have deployed the application. You can see this is the URL. So you can see it, uh, six digit unique ID and it generate a SAD hyphen four. It doesn't get any random number between one, two, three, four, five, six hyphen. I don't know what is the logic behind that, but it is generating. 
so i give the i got the success response basically right and this is my public endpoint you can see it right but now what if no uh, let me show you one more thing here if in case uh, if i have enabled this last my security basically correct so your application endpoint must be listening on https so what you have to do so you yeah, on the http listener basically you have to con change this protocol to https and you have to just configure the tls like you have to provide the uh, key store basically that can deploy the application so then last mile security will be run basically okay. so last mile security means like traffic between ingress load balancer and the application deployed uh, to the cloud of 2.0 is over https like it's end to end https okay so that is the last mile security any question on this before i move to the next slide okay so private space is a uh, similar to any point virtual private cloud in the cloud hub basically it is again virtual isolated and then uh, set isolated network segment in the cloud hub 2.0 to run your mule swap application you can definitely create a multiple private space in the single or multiple region in the cloud hub 2.0 and for creating the private space you always have to choose a uh, ip range basically uh, like no a uh, private ip range or you can call that as a cidr mask a classless interdynamic routing mask basically when to use the private space so whenever you want to connect the resources which is located in the private network or resources which is located in the corporate data center or maybe resources located on the cloud which is not directly accessible over the internet right in that case you can go with a private space if you want if you want to enable a private endpoints on your application for example you may are using the api led connectivity architecture in your environment right where you have a system api you have a process api you have a experience api correct and you you may have a requirement where your system api and process api must not be accessible uh, publicly right in such cases what you can do you can remove the public endpoint from the system api and the process api basically and you can just keep a private endpoint right and whereas on the experience api you can have a both private endpoint and the public endpoint so that is how if experience api want to communicate with the system uh, process api it can definitely communicate with a private endpoint if process api want to communicate with system api it can communicate with a private endpoint basically because they are the part of same network segment right so even like in case if you have a requirement to host all the application under the same domain you can make use of the private space and if you want to enable or if you want to you know configure any inbound or outbound firewall rules you can go with a private space so it allow you to configure at inbound rule and at outbound rule per private space so this is the typical architecture of the private space so here you can see you have a uh, a domain uh, your custom domain myapp.api.example.com so where like uh, the client can send the request to the ingress load balancer right so from ingress load balancer the application the request will route to the mule swap application now mule swap application want to access the resources located in on premise data center and aws vpc for connecting aws uh, vpc uh, from the private space you can make use of the transit gateway for connecting a corporate data center uh, from private space you can make use of vpn ipsec tunneling or this particular cloud of 2.0 doesn't support a vpc peering and direct connect basically so this two approach is not supported by cloud of 2.0 in case if you want to connect a multiple private space what option you will go because we don't have a vpc peering now so can anybody tell me like what is the better option to connect the very private spaces basically let's consider you have a private space in the business group 1 you have a private space 2 in the business group 2 and you want to enable the communication between those two private space so what is the best approach to connect those two private spaces anyone for vpn uh i know vpn vpn is not a, not it will be not a good solution i think vpn cannot be done i think we can definitely like you know we don't have a vpc peering we can connect uh, using the transit gateway basically so you can make use of the transit gateway right so the other advantage with the transit gateway see the transit gateway is nothing it's a network router or you can call this as a cloud router in the aws basically so even like you don't have to create a vpn connection between private space and your on premise data center 
So what you can do, you can create a transit gateway in the AWS. That transit gateway is connecting to the AWS VPC, and the transit gateway is also making the connection to your on-premise data center. And you can attach that particular transit gateway in the private space to uh, to establish the communication between your you know uh, transit gate uh, private space and the transit gateway in the AWS. So this transit gateway will communicate with AWS VPC and the VPN IPsec tunneling. So you can remove the VPN IPsec tunneling from the you know uh, uh, from uh, any point platform or cloud of 2.0. Also, you can manage everything uh, in the AWS transit gateway. So that is the other option basically. So this there are few features which is not supported like any point data grab TLS 1.0. It doesn't support cloud up uh, connectors, VPC peering, AWS uh, direct connect, and persistent VMQs. Basically, I think the URL rewriting it started supporting now basically. So like uh, what are the benefits? Why cloud up 2.0? As you mentioned, as I mentioned, it's a uh, it's it provides the container based isolation. So container is always lightweight basically. So it is. It can be easily scale up and scale down depending on the requirement. And there is a no need of dedicated load balancer. It generally provide uh, inbuilt uh, ingress load balancer, which auto scale and the self manage basically. And apart from that, like uh, I will tell you, like you know, generally uh, in cloud of 1.0 for public traffic, we have a one dedicated load balancer, and for the private traffic, we have other dedicated load balancer, right? So generally, we keep two dedicated load balancer for private and for public traffic. Here we don't have to do that. Here we simply remove the public endpoint from the application, right? So it means once we remove the public endpoint from the application, right? So any external application doesn't cannot communicate with that particular application, right? So apart from that, you you are allowed to uh, configure AT inbound rule as well as AT outbound rule. Whereas in like cloud VPC or in cloud of 1.0, you can configure only inbound rule. There is no concept of configuring the outbound rule. And it it is also like come up with various uh, inbound security compliance and the security policies basically. Yeah, this is one of the architecture which I, which I just now talked. So basically, you have a three layer of architecture. Basically, we have a system API, we have a process API, we have an experience API. So for system API, we have a just only private endpoint. For process API, we just have only private endpoint. For like uh, experience API, we have both private and the public endpoint. So any external client can send a request to the Experience API over the private endpoint. Experience API can communicate with the Process API over the private endpoint, and the Process API can communicate with the private endpoint. Basically, uh, sorry, Process API can communicate with the System API over the uh, internal private endpoint. Basically, like you no. Know? So that is how uh, you can restrict the access of your API to the external consumer. Basically, right? So yeah, let me uh, show uh, some demo. Okay. Before I move, anybody have any question? I will take question later. Okay, all these questions. Okay. So now let's see if my private space has been created. Yeah, you can see the private space has been created. Let me maximize the screen. So here uh, you can see, uh, you know, your application region. In which region you have created the application? The CIDR block which you have given initially configure, so it's nothing. It's a IP and your DNS mapping which you always do in your Windows etc host file, right? So that particular mapping can be done here. An IP address and the domain. If you want to resolve some domain with a particular IP addresses, basically, right? So like for example, what generally like most of the customer have a same URL for the production and the for the UAT for the test environment or for the development environment. For example, I have this URL api.example.com for the prod, right? And api.example.com same URL for UAT also. But whenever the request come within the UAT non-production private space, right? It should resolve to IP address like uh, 238.99.88.77, right? So whenever Request come to uh, prod uh, private space. It should resolve to 237 78 like that, you know. So you can route the traffic basically. So you may have a uh, same URL, but in different environment, it is resolving to the different IP address. So such kind of mapping can be decided here basically, right? So basically, like for example, you you are connecting you you are sending the HTTP request, you know, to some API.example.com. Right. Uh, 
if it works, then in that case, it should resolve to this IP address in the UT, this IP address in the production. Such mapping can be defined here, correct? Then like a public DNS, this is nothing, this is my public endpoint. So if I just say CMD and I say NS lookup, So you can see this is resolved to these three IP address, 3.131, 3.21. So you can see these uh, three same IP addresses here, 3.131, 76, like you know, all these three IP addresses. So these are the public IP address. So can anybody tell me why the three IP address? Why not two? Why not one? Why not four? Why not five? I guess uh, this is an ingress load balancer URL and it is deployed to a specific uh, AWS region. So it might be the case that US H2 may have uh, three availability zones. So it is deployed to three availability zones and hence Correct. three. So you, are, you are right. Correct. Mm -hmm. You are absolutely right. So basically like uh, whenever like you select the region in that particular region, if you have a three availability zone, then it will have a three inbound static IP and the three outbound static IP basically. So each uh, one, each I, one, uh, one IP is like, you know, relate to one availability zone. And the second IP relate to second availability zone, third IP is relate to third availability zone. Okay, so that is how it is happening basically. Then in same way, we have an outbound static IP address. So if I if I just uh, let me do if I can resolve this internal one. And let's look up. Right. So you can see the internal has been resolved with 190 domain, the IP range which we have given, right? So it will always resolve to the IP, like, you know, it will always select the IP, which we have given basic from this particular range. Okay. So now outbound static IP, we have talked about, this is the public uh, endpoint. This is the private endpoint. Now I will talk about the route table. So route table just decide how to route the traffic in and out of the private space, basically. So here 192.68, which is the IP range which given. So this is accessible within the local and like 0.0, .0 active internet gateway. So basically it can access the internet basically via internet gateway. In case if I remove this entry and when I deploy the application in the private space, it will not able to communicate application which is located over the internet. Also internet gateway is required to communicate for application to communicate with the API manager. So whenever you are enabling the API auto discovery, right? It connect with the API manager over the internet. Whenever it connect to any point MQ, right? It required that internet connectivity. Otherwise, it will not able to connect if you are reviewing the internet gateway. But in case you have a requirement, you don't want your application to connect from the uh, to internet, then you have to remove this internet gateway. Basically, you can remove that particular. If you want to add more and more route add, entry, you can do it basically, right? Now I will come to outbound static IP addresses. Basically, what is that outbound static IP addresses? Anybody can tell me. No. So have, have you heard about the concept called static IP address in the cloud of 1.0 and why we use the static IP address in the cloud of 1.0? If we don't depend the IP address. And why we don't want point. to change. Yeah. Why we don't want to change the IP address frequently. Like, you know, because it's specific white list that the IP address again and again. Correct. You are right. So basically, let's consider whenever you deploy the application in the cloud of 1.0, right? And so basically what is happening, like whenever you are redeploying it, the public IP addresses keep on changing while restarting, while redeploying basically, right? So if you want to avoid that, in that case, you always enable option called use static IP address, right? So with that, what will happen whenever you are redeploying your application basically or restarting application, your public IP address will not change. Why you don't want to change your public IP address of your application? Because let's consider you have an application which is connecting to some destination application or maybe connecting to some SFTP location where IP whitelisting is required. So what you do, you use the static IP on that MuleSoft application and you whitelist that particular IP address in the source system basically or in the destination system, whatever you call it, right? So the MuleSoft application can communicate with that particular SFTP location securely, basically. But here, when we deploy the application, we don't have any such option where we can make use of static IP address. We don't have that option, right? 
but here you have that option available at a private space level so whenever your application whenever you deploy the application in the private space and they want to communicate with the application where white listing is required right so you can give these three ip address these three ip address can be white listed there so you don't know like uh, because why we have to give a three ip address because you don't know in which availability zone your application will deploy whenever you redeploy it again you don't know where it will go basically right so you can do that but the here one of the limitation once you give this three ip address basically correct uh, to the end user or to the destination system all other application can also communicate with those those source application because this this ip uh, white listing will be happen for all the application basically right here we cannot do per application which we are doing in the cloud of 1.0 here we are doing at a private space level basically but here we have a advantage right so basically how many static ip address we get uh, in the cloud of 1.0 it's in two into number of production v course if you have a two production v course so you give a four static ip address so if you are deploying 100 i 100 application out of 100 you 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 your 10 application needs need a static ip address but you have a four static ip address then what you will do you have to purchase additional static ip addresses basically right so i like this is the good approach basically like you have a ip like no ip white list uh, static ip address available at a private space level and you can just use these three ip addresses can be white listed basically this ip address is free it doesn't need to purchase that it's come with a static ip a private space basically okay uh, sir uh, let's say we have a scenario uh, where we have a scheduler based application which reads a file from a sftp location and then it does some transformation and then again writes at the sftp location now this mm. sftp is present behind the corporate firewall so do we need to uh, whitelist all these six uh, ips no if it's behind the firewall you require the vpn connection right behind the firewall you cannot do anything you require the vpn connection okay and uh, if it is uh, not behind the firewall then it depend like it, like you cannot blindly go and just write because it depend on like whether that source application uh, have a white listed policy right it depend on that particular thing like if that particular source application doesn't have a white listed policy they just want like anybody can connect if they have a username and the password right then you don't have to white list that it it depend like what kind of policy is applied on the destination system it depend on that right yeah okay so now i will come to domain and tls so by default as i mentioned you can see like you know view detail so you have a uh, internal domain you have external domain but this doesn't looks good and i want uh, some user friendly domain basically so what i will do i have created few certificate with a user friendly domain right so i have a, a server key store for dev and qa so for like for this particular private space basically it's for like my non production environment may up to the qa and the dev environment both so what i will do i will create a tls i will upload jks file jks uh certificates then i can say you know api domain dev i will give a password mule soft i will select the lis i will give a key password that is again mule soft and if in case it able uh, two way authentication you have to add all the client certificates here basically basically right but right now i will just avoiding it so uh, if you want to enable the two way uh, authentication for this particular domain you can just add the client certificates also now this is just create tls right now i will add one more tls instead of dev i can say qa upload jks file i will say qa LIS Okay done But like adding certificate is not enough like you know so you need to do some uh, do uh, DNS registry in your registrar basically right so like what you have to do like you have these two URLs so basically you have this particular url right and now you have a second url
this is my second url and i call this as a e record or fqdn this is a record or fqdn fully qualified domain name this is a internal a record right and now what you have to do in dns you have to do the registry right no so this is done and i can say api domain so you can do this uh, particular entry and this is known as a c name so you have to do the like you know in your uh, organization domain registry you have to do this entry so whenever traffic come on this particular url you have to like route to this and similarly like you know you can have a internal domain also so that that particular domain must be accessible within your organization so you can simply say internal api there right whatever like you can now for qa also you have to do the same thing right so your a record will not change because you are mapping your multiple environment with the same private space right so this is our this is this is what entry you have to perform in perform domain registry basically dns registry right it can be godaddy so it depends from where you have bought this particular domain if you have bought from the godaddy you have to go to like godaddy and just have to do this particular mapping between c name and your a record it may take up to 424 hours uh, uh, to get get it reflect basically right so that is that is how you can you have to add the certificate and if you want to enable the two way authentication you can simply you know uh, like you can go to edit and you need to add the trust store basically like client certificates so let me go back i will cancel it now you have a firewall rule so you can define the inbound traffic firewall rule on various protocol like http https tcp like that you can also have a like you know uh, if you want to enable the ping you can use the icmp protocol like you know so for outbound you support tcp udp http https like you know where you want like over the local private network or anywhere on what which port like you know it depend like you know uh, you can just open the firewall and you can just uh, inbound and outbound so here you can just map the environment if you want to map you know all the environment with the same private space you can just select the any environment and the business group and the its business you can its children business group and you can select the business group also but if you only want to map all the uh, non production environment just select the sandbox environment if you only want to map the production environment you can just select the production environment but for now i have used any environment and advanced this is very important so this is the ingress load balancer setting so like you can just uh, define the response time out by default it's 5 minutes 300 second right so you can increase or decrease basically and also one of the good thing that or uh, like for dedicated load balancer we are not able to download the logs but here we can download the logs also simply you can download what kind of logs you need to do error debug trace and also you can add for which ip address you want log so those kind of logs can be downloaded now these are the three options redirect to http is accept http drop http so it will like you know whenever a request come it will always redirect to the https basically the, your your like downstream api must be listening on https accept http http it will accept http request as well as https request drop http means it will only accept the https request it will drop all the http require request basically right so these are the few uh, good uh, settings available on your private space that you can configure right now yeah any question and like, apart from that if you want to create a vpn connection on transit gate you can simply give a vpn connection name and just say next and you can just create you know similar to uh, cloud up 1.0 you can create your vpn connections also from here basically you require all this detail what is the remote ip what kind of you know uh, routing type you want and like you can simply create you know automatic so you have to give a few settings and it will just uh, create a vpn uh, tunneling by default a vpn is highly available so basically like you have, once you create a vpn you can simply create a redundant vpn which will automatically overwrite all the settings of the primary vpn in case of primary vpn goes down you have a secondary vpn which will take care of all of all the requests basically right so let me go to the application let me show you some important things now so i will just say mule demo app ps okay i will select target as a private space i will select the file which i have just now export not just now just 15 20 minutes back 
and i'll keep all the settings here i will go to here so in ingress basically this is the default url we are getting right so you yes, can see that i will add endpoint so now i also want to get domain for this particular thing right so you can simply say you know uh, select that but why i can select the qa also for but i don't want the qa to map with this environment right because i am doing in the dev environment if you want to map like api hyphen qa dot domain dot com that you can map in the qa environment so that is how you can define what url come in the development environment what url can be map in the qa environment right you can have a multiple urls or multiple tlx context available in your private space but here you can define what you know uh, what url can be mapped basically so you can map multiple public endpoints basically there's a no limit limits on that you can map multiple endpoints yeah sir can i have one question please yeah uh sorry in cloud 1.0 uh, uh cloud 1 1.0 we have the logic where we define some rule to change the domain right and that's one rule is implement, implemented for all throughout the applications i mean lots of applications we can for one domain change only but in this cloud 2.0 we have to write it separately for all the applications or it will Which rule you are talking about? Like we have something called change. mapping rule on the dedicated yeah. load balancer. Yeah, right? mapping right? rule to change the domain. Yeah, but here we don't have to do the change. Here we are doing the mapping of the domain, right? Already, like we don't have to define any rule. Now here I am selecting, like you no, know, if I uh, I am in the development environment, it will list down all the endpoints which I have configured on the private space, right? So if mm -hmm. I was in the queue environment, I may have selected this, right? Right now I am in the development environment. I am mapping this endpoint right now, correct? Okay. So you so don't have to you, you don't have to do the routing like you don't have to define any rule here basically here you are directly mapping the rule uh, mapping the URL basically right there so we each application we have to go and make that change or just one place there, we... no you are not like uh, you have to add like you have to do from CI/CD pipeline right so in CI/CD pipeline okay. you can just say this is the host and this is the path for my development environment ah oh, okay okay got it okay right. So right now this particular URL will not work because I haven't done the DNS registry. But let's I will deploy it. And here this is the private endpoint. You can see it. New PS internal like no. So let me uh, deploy the application quickly. so here you can see the two url uh, one is this uh, mule domain like you know it's still deploying i think it's a test is the path can you this will not work because we haven't done the external mapping for this particular application yet so let's wait if it's getting deployed any question let's let me take uh, if there is any question i will just enable the mic for everyone i will try to enable it uh jackie one question yeah just give me a second like sure. let me okay yeah 
we can go ahead okay so since the static ip address are uh, assigned to the you know the private space mm -hmm. uh, and uh, each ip address is assigned to an application so what happens is if we delete the application the assigned ip address also will get lost Correct. no it will not because it is at a private space level it will not if you are deleting the private space then it only deleted then it, again you are creating the private then it generate it doesn't matter right no if you are deleting your application the static outbound static ip will not change it will remain same right the outbound static ip okay but when it comes to the inbound static ip when we delete the application in the private space it gets deleted and get back to the pool why no why it will delete it because like IP address is associated with a private space, not with the application, basically, right? So you okay. delete application, you do whatever, like, but the, your IP address okay. will not get deleted. Okay. It will remain so there only. That, yeah, assuming that. So I deployed more than one application. Okay. So let's mm -hmm. say we have three IPs, three static IPs, and I deployed three. You know, uh, no, uh, it's not like that. It's not like that. Okay. So like, if you deploy 10, 10, 10 application. This mm -hmm. three, like you know, those all those ten application will use three IP addresses to communicate externally. Okay, it doesn't mean like uh, each application will get uh, its own study. It's not. It's a at a private space level. Each application request will go via private space to the outbound, right? Oh. That's why we have out outbound firewall rule. In one point, it has it's to go like that. So, and uh, each application yeah. is assigned to a static IP. That's what I mentioned, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I already explained that particular thing, right? So basically in 1.0, we don't have that. We have to allocate the IP address to each and every application. Right. And even like by default, we got two into two into number of uh, V cores. Basically, if right. you have a two V cores and you just get a four static IP address for additional, you have to uh, purchase the extra IP addresses for static IP address. But here, no, every you deploy 100 application in private space, it will communicate externally with these three IP addresses only. So does it, does it have any, uh, 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 implications or not implications that does it multiply with the replicas no no it doesn't like nothing to do with multi oh, it's, it's, a will... okay, it's a private space okay got it got it, got yeah. it. Okay. all right yeah. makes sense thank you okay so now like my application is deployed i got a successful response from my private space also you can see that right uh here my application where it is gone yeah let me go to application This is one. So here you can see there are two domain has been mapped. So basically API dev domain name, new lab PS basically right now, this particular domain will not work. Then like we have other domain, this particular do mule domain basically. And this is my int pub, uh, like uh, public endpoint. So through which I can access the application, you can see it. And even you can see the private endpoint might be generated ingress and private endpoint and copy this private endpoint. I think the application will be not accessible from here. It should not, it should give me error. And if I resolve this private endpoint, let's see, it should be uh, one of the IP address basically from the CIDR mask. Yeah, it is, it is one of the IP address basically like, you know, from your CIDR mask basically. Yeah, which is good. Let's consider like if I don't want, you know, a public endpoint this for this particular application, you can simply delete it and just apply the changes. Then it will only accessible over the private endpoint basically, right? So like you can do with a private space. Any question? Like I have enabled the mic for, uh, if I miss anybody's uh, question, just ask me, I can quickly answer you. Uh, just a small question, Jitendar, as I said, uh, as I asked in chat. So uh, you said like in 2.0, we have uh, uh, zero downtime. We can make this by, by using rolling update, right? But the same is available in Cloud Hub 1.0 also. It is zero downtime, right? Yeah, so it's how zero downtime. It differs, yeah, how this rolling yeah, yeah. update differs with the normal uh, Cloud Hub 1.0? No, there's there there no difference. It's the same, like okay. some features like you cannot like uh, do the differentiator on the all the which cloud 1.0 is provided zero downtime right mm -hmm. so in here we don't have anything other than zero downtime right 
anything better than zero downtime, right? Yes. So yes. like it, it also provide the feature like zero downtime. Okay, so in Cloud Hub one dato, we are just using normal uh, redeploy application, but here we need to select rolling update if I am not wrong. Yeah, yeah. Here we okay. have option like Cloud Hub one point zero. I think we don't have option where we uh, can specific it, option right? is not there. Yeah. Yeah, here we okay, have okay. both options available. So oh. recreate is a faster. I will say it's very faster basically than rolling update. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. I I've noticed like if uh, recreate take one or two minutes to deploy, a rolling update make it take five minutes. Like you know, so that's a difference. Mm -hmm. But for uh, new applications, we should definitely select uh, this recreate. Yeah. Re uh, yeah. So, but for like, updating uh, any existing application, we need to follow rolling update, right? And it depends. Like if you don't want zero, if you are doing deployment after business hour, also you can go with the recreate. Right? It's a faster basically. That is only way. But also oh, it comes with lim sure. limitations. Let's consider when you are doing the deployment recreate. If deployment doesn't happen, if something goes wrong with the dip, then your application will the old application will be not accessible. But in case of rolling update, you your old application is there till the new deployment is not success. Right, your old application is still up. Okay, uh, I just got one more doubt here. So you are saying like for existing applications also we can select a recreate option. So in that yeah, case, you, any you any URL URL can no, be change? No, no, nothing. No URL will change. Yeah, like uh, URL. Uh, I think URL will not change. URL will not change. Okay, URL will remain same. Okay. Because but it, it will, will deploy it as a new application, right? If we yeah, it will deploy, but but it will move the load. Uh, it will use the same load balancer basically. Uh -huh, so but URL, URL will, path will not change. No, URL doesn't change. Only it will re it will redeploy the application basically. Okay, okay. Because in Cloud Hub one two, whenever we need to create a new application, that application name should be unique, uh, right? But yeah, uh, but but there we are deleting the application, right? We have to delete it. Uh -huh, the uh -huh, if you okay. want to do the new deployment, we have to delete the application. Here we are not deleting it. Okay, with the same URL, uh, it will create a new application. Okay. Yeah, if, it, yeah. you, if you want to see the demo, I also yeah never done this, but let's see. It will not change. I'm hundred percent sure about that. Okay. I don't know, like no. Let's check. Where is my application? Which one? I think not this one. Not this one. I think this is the only one. Yeah. Let's see if I. Choose recreate. It's a recreate only, and check the URL. Let I will just browse the URL also. So if I can access the same, I don't think to change the URL. No, it does not. It will not. Okay, okay. Like, see, it is so recreating. It's like you it, cannot but... have. Yeah. You but cannot here have you will see one change. applications with the same name, Lakshmi. So when we have multiple applications with a different name, that would mean multiple URLs, right? Even though you are uploading or redeploying the same application, the public endpoint doesn't change. Not even the, yeah, uh, yeah. In, uh, here you can see. Mm -hmm. yeah, here you can see your application become red here, right? It means it is a read, like it deleted and it's deploying, but endpoint will not change. Oh. It will okay. remain same. Why I got this doubt is like while while uh, deploying the same application again in Cloud Hub One we need to give a, another name. The same name we cannot give if that application no, is running, here, right? So that here is if you see mm. here you can like uh, like in Cloud Hub One Point Zero, we have a, your name must be unique across the control plane, right? Mm -hmm. Not only across the organization, not only across the org environment, yes, yes. or not only it should be across unique across the control plane. Here, the application name can be same across the control plane. But it automatically adds the unique ID. You can see. Yes, it yes, I observed uh, it. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it adds the shard basically, right? So these are the yes. two things. It, it automatically adds to make the application name unique basically. Oh, okay, okay. Got across it. Across the control plane. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Anitisha, as well. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And any question? Like, I miss any, like, when we select what? If does like it will have nothing like you can select the rolling update right so for new application you do whatever you want you can do recreate you can do re rolling update so like it will create on some of the pod ready you know uh, it will create some on the some of the pod uh, you have create um, maybe on the primary node basically um, Jackie one more question 
So in cloud of 1.0, <coughs> excuse me, when we redeploy the application, right, as part of CICD, mm -hmm. using the application name, we will give the, let's say we are going through CLI, we will give the action as update. Now in uh, cloud of 2.0, if we are redeploying the application, mm -hmm. since the application domain name is something dynamic, you said, so how we have no, to take care? No, I haven't. I haven't got your question. Like, uh... um, so in cloud of one point zero, right? As part of the CI/CD, um, when we redeploy the application, let's say a new version we are deploying or a bug fix we are yeah. deploying, yeah, mm -hmm. we will mention the application domain name, right, uh, along with the package that we want to upload it to the uh, runtime manager. So in 2.0, since the application domain name is something dynamic, how are we going to uh, manage Where is, uh, I don't think like, where is, like, as I mentioned, right? So basically like, uh, see, this, this, like, you know, this will not change. Like this will for the first time, like, you know, for the shared load balance. And then you have to use this, like, you know, so whenever you deploy it, you will get the URL public endpoint. You have to just copy and paste that endpoint and you have to share with your customers or the consumers basically, right? But with a, with a private space, as I mentioned, right, you can have a something called a custom domain. You can make use of the custom domain basically, and that custom domain can remain uh, same for all the application in the dev environment. That custom domain can remain same for all the application in the queue environment. You just have to pass the uh, right domain like from your CI/CD pipeline, right? Uh, for dev environment, you can have a API dev dot domain name dot com. For queue environment, it can be API QA dot domain name dot com, right? So that configuration you have to do it basically, right? So otherwise, like you don't have any other option. You have to do that configuration either by CI CD or either you have to just uh, go to the runtime manager and you have to do it at application level. These are the only two ways you have to do it. Okay. And this URL generated like uh, it's not in our control. You give an application name that unique ID and SAD is generated automatically. That is not in our control. All right, thank you. Yeah. Okay. If nobody have any question, anybody have any question? No, thank you, Jitendra. Thanks for explaining all this uh, you know, valuable information. No problem. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thanks everyone for joining the session. And we have next session coming on the QRM management. So anybody have heard about the QRM management with any point clustering? Not yet. Not yet. Like we, we, subscribe. We, we subscribe for that. Sure, yeah, sure. Hey, uh, can you guys share this recording for uh, no future reference? Yeah, yeah, I will definitely do that. Right. No yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Hey, thanks. Bye-bye.